Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this video where we will implement SRGAN from scratch. And uh, yeah, so in the last video, I did a paper walkthrough, uh, sort of g going through all of the details of this. But so for those of you who haven't watched that video, I'll just quickly summarize the, the important part. So the important part is that we are, or the goal here is that we have, it's very simple, we have some low resolution image and we want to make it into a high resolution image. And for that, we use uh, GAN, where we have a generator network and we have a discriminator network that looks like this. It's, it's quite simple, um, but we'll, you know, we'll go through uh, the details of when we actually implement this. So what could be important to mention? So yeah, we'll be implementing the model first um, and then we'll set up the rest. Um, and for the data, this is images from Div2K and Flickr2K data set, which is not exactly what they used for SRGAN. They actually used a subset that we don't know exactly what uh, the subset is, but a subset of ImageNet. Uh, however, this is the data set they used for um, ESRGAN. So this should be sort of an improved data set, uh, but it's a lot smaller and um, I think it works just as well. There's be there are gonna be links if you want to follow along um, for the data sets. But yeah, I guess the important part is uh, implementing the uh, the model here. So yeah, let's do that. All right, so we're gonna import Torch, um, and from Torch we're gonna import NN um, and class com block so we're going to create just the sort of the the blocks that we're going to use and the blocks are a com block which is just going to be a com batch norm relu which is exactly what you see here com batch norm um well p relu not relu com batch norm p relu or if you're in the discriminator it's com batch norm leaky relu uh, so that's what's going to be in the com block uh, just com batch norm leaky or prelu and then we're gonna have an upsample upsample block where we will you know upsample the image this is gonna upsample it by two um, so if it's um, you know 128 by 128 it's gonna become 256 by 256 and then we're also gonna input implement a residual block and the residual block is going to be what you see here um, so the residual block is one of these blocks here um, which is pretty simple you know it's a, a, a three by three kernel um, stride of one a padding of one so it's the same convolution batch norm prelu conv batch norm and then we have an element wise sum uh, where we have a skip connection and you th those are also shown with these blue arrows here. So that's between all of the residual blocks right here. And at the top, they mentioned B residual blocks. Um, uh, and the B is gonna be 16 in this case. So let's see, um, you know, the residual block here then is only going to be for the generator uh, since we don't have any residual connections for the discriminator. And the discriminator is sort of just a VDG architecture, basically. Uh, you know, basically it is VDG. And then um, those are the blocks that we're gonna need. Then we'll do the, the generator and we'll also do the, uh, the discriminator. And that's it. So yeah, let's start from the top then. Um, gonna do the init method first and I guess we can do something like this we're gonna have self uh, we're gonna have some in channels and then we'll have some out channels uh, we're also gonna specify if it's in the discriminator or not so we'll set false by default uh, that's gonna you know impact which activation function we're gonna use um, and then we're also gonna do use activation um, because sometimes, as you see here, this is what we call a com block, but sometimes, you know, in these residual blocks, for example, 
we don't have an activation for the the the, the half the the other half of this residual block. Uh, but you'll see uh, later on. Just we're gonna set a binary if we're gonna use an activation or not, and we're also gonna do one use batch norm or not. So we'll set true by default, and then we'll just send in some keyword arguments. So that'll be you know the kernel size, the stride, padding. And what we have to do first is call super as always. We need to initialize the CNN and then com to D with in channels, out channels. And then we'll just send in the keyword argument, which will be, you know, the kernel stride padding. We'll set bias to false. Mm. Well, actually, this should be, let's see, bias should be uh, false if we if we use batch norm, right? So maybe we can do not uh, use batch norm, right? So if batch use batch norm is true, then this is going to be uh, false. All right, and then for the the batch norm, that's just going to be batch norm 2D of out channels. Um, and again, we're going to use batch norm if use batch norm. Otherwise, we're just going to set it to an, an identity. So it's just going to be something that you just pass it through. Um, yeah. And then we'll create the activation, which is going to be an, an leaky relu with a slope of 0 0.2 uh, when it's less than zero. Um, and then we're going to do in place equals true as well. Uh, if it's the discriminator, right? That's if, the disc if it is uh, the discriminator and we should not have the comma here. But otherwise, we're going to set it to P relu. P relu. And it's going to be, yeah, so P relu is basically that you can um, basically train it to specify the slope. Um, so the, sl the slope right here, it's 0 0.2. This is actually a trainable parameter for PRELU. And I think it's also um, that you can specify the number of parameters such that um, each channel um, outputted, right? So the each of these out channels is going to have a separate slope. Um, this is rarely used, so I don't think this is very important, but we'll just set it to num parameters equals out channels, because that's what they did in the paper. And then we'll do forward, um, and we'll send in X. And here we will just return self.activation of self.batch norm of self.cnn of X. Um, if self.use activation, uh, otherwise we'll do self.batch norm of self dot um, CNN. So I guess we have to specify here self dot use activation is use activation. All right, so that's the com block, and we're going to use that a lot, right? So then in the up sample block, uh, we'll do define init. Well, we send in some in channels and some scale factor. That's going to be two um, in all of the cases. And then we'll do, first of all, the conv is going to be nn conv 2 d We'll do in channels, and then we'll do in channels times the scale factor raised to 2. Um, and the reason why we increase the channels here, instead of doing something like, you could imagine doing a bilinear upsample, just increase the height and the width. But so the reason why we do that is because we're going to be using pixel shuffle, so self.ps is and then pixel shuffle um, of scale factor. So this is going to take the, the channels, which is going to be in C times four, right? And then we'll have height and width. It's going to transfer the channels. So it's going to shuffle it so that we have in channels times height, uh, in channels, height times two, width times two, right? So this is going to, make the height twice as large and the width twice as large. Um, so that's what we do there. And then the activation uh, is just going to be a P relu again of num parameters equal to in C, right? Because after the sh after the pixel shuffle, it's still going to be in C number of channels. 
All right, and then for the forward, we'll just send in X here and we'll return self dot activation of self dot pixel shuffle of self dot comp. X like that. So that's the upsample block. And then we'll need the residual block. And uh, yeah, this is not going to be anything tricky. Honestly, nothing in this architecture is particularly tricky, I guess. Um, and then we'll just do two blocks. So block one will be a com block of in channels, um, two in channels. So we won't change the number of channels uh, in the residual block. As you can see here, it's going to be 64 from the first, this initial part right here. And, um, and then it's also going to be uh, 64 when it's outputted. So it's going to be 64 all the time. Uh, we're not going to modify the number of channels. And we'll just specify the kernel size, the stride, and the padding. Then we can copy paste that and we'll do another block. Two same channels and the only thing we're going to change here is that it's going to use activation to false um yeah that's it uh what is the error right we need a comma here but that should be it and then in the forward part we'll send in x and we'll just do you know out is self dot block of one of x out is self dot block two of x and then we'll return out, right? That means that we've sent it through one of these blocks, but we also need to remember that we want the skip connection uh, that was inputted to the block. So that it will just be out plus X, right? X was the input. And here it should be out. Yeah, all right. All right, so those are the, the three building blocks that we're gonna use. And uh, now for the generator, we'll do Define, uh, let's see, define init, and we'll specify in channels to be three num blocks to be 16 as default. We'll call super init, and um, I guess we could use a, I guess we can do that. So we can do self dot initial is a com block uh, where, we will, where we will specify in channels to. Um, yeah, I guess we could do 64. Perhaps it's easier to just do num channels to 64 here. So we'll just do num channels. And then we'll specify kernel size to be 9. Stride, let's see. Kernel 9. V, um, yeah, stride of 1. And then they specified a padding so that everything should be same padding. So this padding should be 4. Um, and that's just from, I don't know, I don't know what it's called, like the the formula for how you calculate the, the output size um, when you use a particular kernel size, stride, and padding. Let's see, we should also specify we should not use batch norm. Um, yeah, because in the beginning, they didn't do that. So no batch norm in the beginning. And then we'll do self.residuals. That's going to be the 64 blocks right here in the middle here and that'll be self that residuals is uh and an and sequential and we'll do um, asterisk and then we'll do residual block of of num channels for underscore in range of num blocks right so here in the list we'll we're using list comprehension to create all of the 16 blocks we're doing asterisk to unwrap that list of all of those residual blocks and we're turning it into an NN sequential. Then for the, I guess, yeah, this one here, this is just going to be a com block. So we'll just do com, com block is an NN sequential of, well, actually we can do just com block of this will be with no activation, right? So we'll just do com block of, let's see, 64, right, num channels, num channels, and then 
kernel size three, stride one, and padding one. And then, um, let's see, what was it? So no activation. So use activation false. And that is it. And then for the final, no, sorry, we need to have the up samples as well. So that is going to be a and then sequential of an up sample block of num channels and then scale factor is two and then another one of num channels and a scale factor of two right so now we have created this right that's the initial one we have done all the residual blocks we've done this one and we've now done the up samples as well uh, for the final we just need another com block there so then we'll do self up final is and then com 2d of num channels and then uh let's see here so we need to do in i guess in channels right similar as the one that was input um and kernel size nine stride one padding four and that's it okay so for the forward part we're sending in x right and just some image and we need to send it through the the initial one first so we'll just do initial is self dot initial of x what we do then is we we're going to send it through all of these residual blocks so we'll do x is self dot residuals of initial and the reason why i specify specify initial here is because we want the skip connection that is after the first uh, com layer here or after the first com and Pirelu. So we want to now uh, run it through um, the, the output from the residual. We want to run it through this com block. So we'll do x is self.com block of x, right? But then you only want to do this element y of sum uh, with the one that was outputted from the first one. So that's the initial one. So we'll do plus initial here. Um, and then we're going to run it through the up samples. And then in the end, we'll return torch.tanh of self.final of x. Um, and it's not clear if they actually use 10h, but they normalize within minus 1 and 1. So to me, it only makes sense to do it that way. So now we've done the generator. Uh, now it's gonna be pretty easy for the discriminator. So this is just gonna be like VGG. So we're gonna send in some in channels. Three, we're gonna specify the features and I'll just write them down. So 64, 128, and 512. So let me show you where that comes from. Here we have 64, 64, then 128, 128, yeah, you get the idea. So that's the features right there. So the way that we'll do this is we'll, we'll create a blocks list. And we're gonna go through, so for index, comma feature, in enumerate of features. Then we'll do blocks.append, a com block, which is going to have some in channels uh, to feature. And then the kernel size three stride is one. But here we need to be a little bit careful because it's going to be one in the beginning, but then it's going to be two and then one and then two and then one and then two. And <clears throat> so we're following sort of a, a pattern, right? And the pattern here is that we're going to use a stride of one plus uh, index modulus two. So, you know, in the beginning, right, for the, for the absolute first one, the index is going to be zero. So we'll have one plus zero modulus two, which is just one, which is what we want. But then when we get to the second, right? So when we get to this right here, we want a stride of two. And so when we use one plus one modulus two, that's equal to two. Because one modulus two is still going to be, uh, this is going to be one. And for the padding, we'll do one. Um, we'll use activation uh, true use batch norm we're going to um and let's see here also we need to specify here that discriminator is true here 
right? Because I think we set it as default to false, yeah? And the difference here is going to be in the activation. So here we'll also specify use bash norm. That should be true for all of the ones, all the residual blocks and stuff, or there's no residual block, but all of these blocks, except for the first one. So we'll just do uh, false if index is zero, uh, and otherwise we'll set it to true. And after that for loop there, we'll do uh, in channels equals feature. Okay, so then we'll do self dot blocks is and then sequential asterisk of blocks. So we'll, we're going to unwrap that list. And now what's left is just a classifier here. So classifier, and I don't think this is necessary by the way, but the way that they did it is that they used a dense layer. So first of all, at the end, if you just calculate what it's going to be, so, you know, we have some input, um, let's say in, in the case that we're going to have, we're going to have 96 by 96. So you just divide that by two, divide by two, divide by two for each of the stride equals to two. And if you do that, you're going to see that it's going to be six times six um, when it's outputted. So here they mentioned, you know, the output, output from this linear layer is 1024. So what, we, what we'll do is the, the classifier is NN sequential. And to make sure that it actually is, uh, we'll do an ad adaptive average pooling, which is gonna make it to six by six, which it's going to be, right? So it's not gonna actually do anything if it is 96 by 96. But if you would train it on something larger, like 128 or 192 or something, then this is going to make sure that it's still going to, to run. After that, we'll flatten it. We'll do a linear layer from 512 times 6 times 6, because that is the number of channels at the output, 512. And we'll make it to 1024. Then a leaky ReLU 0.2 in place equals... Um, in, in place is true. And then a linear layer which takes the 1024 to one. All right, hopefully you were able to follow that. So then in the forward, we'll do self X here and we'll run it through the blocks, right? All of those com blocks and then we'll just return self classifier of X. And here you could, you know, do a sigmoid, uh, which is what they did, I believe here, a sigmoid at the end. Uh, we won't do that because we'll um, specify to use BC which, with Logit, so it'll also include the sigmoid, but that is something you could do. And then uh, I'm just going to copy paste in this here. So we'll run it, and there's probably going to be an error. Yes, there was. Cannot assign module before module at init call. Um, all right, so that's here. We'll do super that in it and that works. Awesome. So, you know, this should now also work if you do something. So the lower resolution that we're going to use, um, the high resolution is 96 by 96. So when you divide that by four, you get 24 by 24 and that's what we're going to run it with. So when we upsample it, uh, we get this size here which is 96 by 96, which is the output from the generator. And then when you run it through the discriminator, you're just going to get one single output. And here in this simple test case, the batch size is five. Um, but to make sure that it actually works for something larger, let's just set it to 100. And this should then be 400 by 400, which might be a little bit, yeah, it still works. But it took a while. And uh, yeah, so that is the model. And, um, you know, to make this video kind of compact because, you know, this series of GAN videos is, I guess, over 10 videos now. So we've done the training loop and all of that stuff many, many times. And I don't want to sort of repeat all the same details. Um, but the thing that I'm going to implement, I'm not going to implement the training loop. I'll just, um, I'll copy paste it over and I'll go through it so that there's nothing that is weird. But, um, yeah, I don't want to write it from scratch. What I will write though is the loss function uh, because in the, uh, so they used GAN loss, but they also used a perceptual loss using VGG. 
So they run the image through VGG, we get some feature representation and we want to uh, minimize the difference between the upscaled image and the original high quality image when they've been run through uh, VGG uh, when we obtain the features. So we'll do um, import torch.nn as an n from torchvision.models import VGG19. So they use VGG19 specifically and then we'll import config. And so the layer that they use as output from VGG is actually a specific one. Um, so in the paper they write 554 or something where they define phi um, to be, so I think this is the fifth conv layer af uh, before max pooling, but after activation or something like that. So I just printed VGG19 and I just counted, you know, where exactly that should be. Um, but so we'll do class VGG loss. We'll inherit from NN module the init method and then super. We'll do self VGG is VGG19. Well, we want to have it pre-trained um, and then we'll do dot features. So then you'll get all of the ones in sort of a list you will do all the ones up to 36, which is what I counted it to be with this right here. So we'll do dot 236. We'll do dot eval so that we won't update the weights. And then we'll do dot two config dot device. So we haven't done this config, but this is just gonna be uh, another file that we're gonna specify. Yeah, this is the uh, device and the a number of workers and all of that stuff. So then for the loss here, we will just do a mean squared error loss. Uh, so it's gonna, gonna take the mean um, and we'll also do four parameters in self.vgg.parameters. Um, we'll do requires grad is false, right? So we don't want to update it. Um, yeah, so why are we doing, I don't think we need to do that eval here because they don't use dropout and they don't use, maybe they use dropout, not really sure. And then uh, we'll send in some input and some target. And so the input, yeah, we can keep it that way, but you know, the input is gonna be the low resolution or the upscaled low resolution and the target is gonna be the original high quality image. So we'll do VGG input features is self.vgg of that input target features, self.vgg of target, and we'll just return self.loss of, yeah, those, vgg input, vgg target. And that is really it. Um, of course, we could do some test case here, but I'm pretty sure this is going to work. So let me just copy paste some stuff over. Let me see, so I've copy pasted the config. Uh, what else? Um, the config, the data set, the train and utils. All right, so, you know, this is really nothing, you know, the config, we're going to use augmentations for our data augmentation. Um, here you specify load, say model, the checkpoint files, batch size, number of workers, all that stuff. And then um, here for the data augmentation, we'll do some different ones. So we have one boat transforms where we first we get the image, we do a random crop of some high resolution. So remember we have, you know, 2K images. So we're just gonna take a 96 by 96 random crop. Um, and then for the high res, we're just gonna normalize it uh, to be between minus one and one, and then convert it to a tensor. For the low resolution, we'll just take that high quality. And um, that's been, you know, outputted from this boat transforms. We're gonna make it into this 24 by 24 low resolution. And for this, we, would, we will actually normalize to be between zero and one, which is what they did in the paper. Um, and then, let's see. So then the data set, I don't wanna go through this too much. This is just an image folder, right? I've just created my own image folder, similarly as you would have um, from Torch Vision. So yeah, there, there's nothing, I don't wanna focus on this too much. 
Uh, but here we're just doing exactly what I said, where we run into both transforms, and then we get a high res transform and a low res transform. And that's it. And then I just have a simple test case here to make sure that it works. That's the config data set. And then the utils file. Here we have yeah, gradient penalty. We don't actually need this, but that is if you want to play around perhaps with the vegan GP. We have save checkpoint, load checkpoint, uh, and plot examples. So here you would just send in a folder um, of some low resolution folder where you have low resolution images and then you run this plot examples and it's gonna um, upscale it with the current generator uh, to get high, you know, upscaled images. All right, and then for the training, um, yeah, we import all the stuff. Uh, we have a train function where we don't do anything, you know, particularly strange. We loop through the um, the loader. This is for a single epoch. So this is train one epoch. And then we, um, yeah, train the discriminator you know, with BC loss. And then the only difference, I guess, is that I'm also using a, um, yeah, all right, I lost the word. So this is one-sided label smoothing, um, I, which is a good thing to do, especially if you're using something like BC loss here. I would preferably, you know, I um, I did train or I did uh, experiment with using vegan GP, and I did get what I think are s slightly better results. Um, but you know, I wanted this to be as close to the paper as possible. Um, so to me, this should be an exact replication of the paper. Um, so that's the only thing I kind of included on my own was this label smoothing here. All right, and we're not using float 16 either, which you could do. But to me, I found that we are actually limited by the data loading more than the model. So yeah, I wasn't really bottlenecked by that. And then the generator, yeah, and here I guess, so we're running the discriminator uh, on the fake image. We're also doing an L2 loss here, which is a MSC of fake and high res. And then we have adversarial loss, which we multiply with 1e minus 3, similar to the constants that they used, and then 0.006. Um, so what you do first is that you specify, you add this L2 loss here, and then you just remove the other losses. And you, in fact, you, you would comment out all of this stuff, right? So you don't train the discriminator, you don't train this, and you don't train those two. And the only thing you want to generate is this fake that you run through the generator. And then you just train the L2 loss um, to get a pre-trained uh, model. And yeah, so that is what they did. And then after you do that, you remove the L2 loss here. And then you only train with VGG and adversarial loss. But as I mentioned in the paper walkthrough, it's kind of unclear if they actually removed this entirely because I do not get that good results on this. Um, I'll show you, ex I'll show you what I got. So um, this is, so first of all, this is the, the one that they get, all right? So this is the SR ResNet with MSE only, so no GANs involved. And this is what they obtain, um, and this is what I obtain to the left. So you can see that there's a very clear, significant difference between these two. And, um, you know, it's kind of difficult to exactly know what the difference is. I'm pretty sure, that, so perhaps it's a, just a data set, right? We don't, I didn't use the exact data set that they use, but I feel like there's something inherent in the implementation of the model or something like that, uh, or something that they're not clear about in the paper because they don't actually have code. So you can't go through the code to, to know that it's an exact replication. Uh, so there might be details that, that you know, is not shown there. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, I do not get the same results as they do. Um, not even on this, just using MSC loss, which is, you know, completely, there's no GANs, there's sort of a very, you know, well, there's no sort of variation in that way. It should be very simple. But yeah, I do not get that. And unfortunately, I don't have saved images, but I do not get the same result as they did either. I think that you need to play around with these loss terms a lot um, to, to get something that actually works well. And that is, you know, it just takes a lot of time. Yeah, maybe someone someone 
uh, can recognize any mistakes I've made or something like that. But I think this should be a uh, as close as replication as is, as possible. Probably to get good results, you want to play around with the loss terms here um, of these. But anyways, then uh, sometimes we're plotting some examples. Maybe we'll do that uh, index 200 or something. So 200 update steps. And then you plot some examples to see how it's, if it's improved. Uh, the data set, you use my image folder, data loader here. And then uh, you'll do the generated discriminator, uh, atom, which, which is just with the normal beta terms. And, um, and yeah, if you use vegan GP, I recommend you change these to, you know, uh, zero. And then here you're specifying just MSE BC loss, load model or load checkpoint, if we should load the checkpoint. And then we're just training the for number of epochs. Each epoch, we're also saving the model with our checkpoint. Um, I guess we could also train this just a little bit. Um, yeah, just to make sure that it, it does something. But you want to, so maybe we can just train it um, on the, on just. Or actually, I don't want I don't want to waste time on that. But so this is this is the exact. Um, you know, training structure that I used. And to get really good results, you want to play around with these, which I did not get. Um, so yeah. Anyways, it's going to be on GitHub. Um, and um, if anyone train actually trains this and gets good results, let me know um, what kind of constants you used. All right, so that's it for srgan. Hopefully this leaves you with a good understanding of how it actually worked um, and uh, the details of its implementation. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.